This is Geometry, Chapter 6, Section 1, in which we will be studying the angles of polygons. We already know what a polygon is. It's a, a closed shape made up of segments. And we're going to be dealing with convex polygons, such as the one you see in front of you here. We're not going to deal with concave ones that are a lot trickier to work with. We're going to be dealing with convex. The first idea for polygons that we need to talk about is the diagonal of a polygon. It's a segment that connects two non-consecutive vertices. Consecutive vertices would be like GF. They're next to each other in the polygon. Non-consecutive would be like G and D or G and C where you have to go through the inside of the polygon to get to it. Okay. G to A is not consecutive. That would be one of the sides of the polygon. G to F would be a side. But G to any of the other ones would be a diagonal because you have to go through the inside to get to them. And I just picked GC to draw on here. No apparent reason, just whichever one I drew. So diagonals go through the inside. Now if we take our same polygon here and I draw in all the diagonals from a given vertex, so I drew in all of them from point G, then our polygon, our 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 sided heptagon, gets split up into 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 triangles. Now we know how many degrees are in each triangle. We know that a triangle adds up to 180. So here's 180, here's another 180, a third one, a fourth one, a fifth one. We could find the sum of all of these angles. It would be 5 times the 180. Well, that idea is the basis for our first theorem of the chapter, the Polygon Interior Angle Sum Theorem. It says that the sum of the interior angle measures of an n-sided convex polygon, again, we're not going to deal with concave, but those angles add up to n minus 2 times 180. If you know how many sides there are, subtract 2, and then multiply by 180 for the triangles that it made. So our 7 minus 2 was 5. 5 times 180 would be 900 or some such number. <clears throat> and this way we don't have to draw the diagonals every time. Now we can use this theorem in a couple of different ways. Okay. Suppose they ask us just to find the sum of the measures of the interior angles of a convex decagon. All right. The hard part of this is reaching back into our memory to wherever we did names of polygons and pulling out that a decagon is a ten-sided figure. Now that we have that, n is ten, now we can find our sum. 10 minus 2 times 180 from our theorem 6, 1. 10 minus 2 is 8. 8 times 180, my calculator tells me, is 1440. So when they give it to us straight up like that, it's not really that tough. The hard part, like I said, is remembering what this is telling you. Now, another kind of problem is when they tell us information about the angles. We have a pentagon, so we know what it's going to add up to, 5 minus 2 times 180. So if we add all of these things up, add all of those things up, it should equal, from our theorem, 5 minus 2 times 180. So now I'm just going to collect up my terms, gather up the x's, and then gather up the numbers. 
and I get 10x plus 170 equals 540. The 540 coming from this stuff over here, 5 minus 2 is 3 times 180. Subtract the 170 over, and then divide by 10 to get to 37 for x. Now all we have to do is find the measures of the angles. Well, I'm going to start with h because I started with h. Angle h is 2 times x. Well, 2 times 37 is 74. Angle k is the same value, 2 times x, so I'm going to go ahead and do it while I'm at it. Angle L and angle M also have the same values. 3 times 37 plus 14. 3 times 37 is 111 plus 14 is 125. And then angle J, just to make sure we covered it, they told us it was 142 to start with. And if you need a place to check to make sure your answers worked, you can add up all five of those angles, and they should equal 540. And I'll leave that step for you. Okay. Now they can also throw us a little bit of a curveball here. They're going to ask us sometimes to find the measure of each interior angle of a regular polygon. Remember, regular means all the angles are the same. In this case, we have a hendecagon. Now, don't be chicken here. Don't, don't be afraid to look it up. A hendecagon has 11 sides. Can't believe I just said that. So first, we can find the sum. 11 minus 2 times 180. Well, that's 9 times 180, which is 1620. That's what all of those angles together add up to. Well, if I want to know each one, I just need to divide by the 11 angles that it made. And I get this beautiful answer of 147.273 degrees. Now, I was always taught to go to three places. If you don't go to three, that's fine. Just don't tell me it's 147. At least give me something over here. Now we can go the opposite direction. We can figure out how many sides there were, or how many angles there were for that matter, because it'll be the same, if we know one of them in a regular polygon. So suppose they tell me that the, sum, that the measure of one of the interior angles in a regular polygon is 135. We need to backtrack and figure out how many sides it had. Well, 135 times the number of sides, I used x for that, would have to equal the total amount of the angles from theorem 6-1. So 135x would have to equal x minus 2 times 180. Well, the stuff on the right, we can distribute. Now it's just an algebra problem. I'll subtract the 180x over, and then divide and find out that x equals 8. Now, if they wanted to, they could even ask us one further question. Name the polygon who has an interior angle of 135, and we would have to go back and look at what 8 is, and we would report octagon. So they could even ask us that question. They can throw all these different levels of thinking at us, and it's still the same fundamental question. It's just how we answer it. Now, so far we've been tangled up with the interior angles. But we can also talk about the exterior angles. And exterior angles are a lot easier to deal with than interior angles. Because regardless of how many sides we have on our convex polygon, 
theorem 6-2 tells us that the exterior angles always add up to 360. It could be a triangle. It could be a 40-gon. And it doesn't matter. The exterior angles always make the same thing, 360. So let's apply that idea to a couple of problems. We have a quadrilateral that we've extended the sides on so that we can talk about the exterior angles. Those four exterior angles add up to 360. That's what Theorem 6.2 tells us. Well, let's collect up. And I'm going to go ahead and subtract the 139 over while I'm at it. And divide by 17, and we find the value of x is 13. Had they asked us for the angles, all we would have to do is plug the 13 back in. They didn't ask us to, so we won't. And then the last problem we need to look at on these is if they ask us to find the measure of each exterior angle of a regular something, in this case a regular dodecagon. Well, a dodecagon has 12 sides. We can look that up again. All of those angles add up to 360, so 12 times the angle equals 360. Divide by 12, and we find out that each exterior angle of a regular dodecagon is 30. So what did we deal with here? We dealt with adding up the interior angles, and that's n minus 2 times 180. We dealt with exterior angles. They always add up to 360. And we dealt with having to re-remember the... Uh, different names that go with a different number of sides, such as dodecagon equals 12 sides. So not a whole lot as far as heavy lifting, no proofs, which I'm sure you're thankful for. And if you had any questions along the way, hopefully you jotted those down, bring them in and ask them, and we will see you in class.